Today we learn about excursion trains, also called tourist trains. Excursion trains don't usually bring people to a destination. Riding the train is the destination. Local excursion trains like the Blue Goose in Wairika, California offer a fun ride. I took my little brother to see if he liked the trains before taking him on our cross-country trip. Some excursion trains are better than others. The Cumbres and Toltec Railroad travels over part of the historic narrow-gauge line of the Rio Grande Railroad from Chama, New Mexico to Antonito, Colorado in the foothills of the San Juan Mountains. Like many excursion railroads, the Cumbas and Toltec uses steam engines, also called locomotives, to pull the train. In the United States, the driver of the train is called the engineer. He works with the fireman to operate the locomotive. Steam engines require a lot of water. Here the engine takes on water from an elevated tank or water tower. Once we were loaded with water, fuel, and passengers, our train took us to this scenic countryside. At times, the train crew had to stop and pour water on fires set accidentally by sparks from the train. This was definitely a mountain railroad with high bridges called trestles and tunnels. This is one of the tunnels, what they look like inside. It gets very dark in the long tunnels. In English, we have a saying, we see the light at the end of the tunnel, meaning that things are going to get better. Steam engines produce smoke when pulling uphill. At stops, we were able to look over the giant metal wheels and pistons on the steam engine. Excursion trains delight rail fans, as well as people seeking beautiful scenery. And when it comes to scenery, you can hardly beat the White Pass and Yukon route. In Alaska, we arrived at the Yukon Station after taking a bus from the historic gold town of Skagway. This was a classic tourist train ride. We left Skagway to board the train and ride it back to Skagway. We began following the Yukon River, soon crossing the border back into the United States. The fog and mist gave this country a magical feel as if riding a railroad through the clouds. And folks, at this point, the tickets have been collected. Like you said, through the fog, we saw this old railroad trestle. It's like we were seeing the ghost of a historic railroad. What was really spooky is as we followed this railroad with our eyes, we could see that it just ended abruptly. We'd see no trains on this trestle. The White Pass Railroad was built about 1900, only two years after the gold rush here. Before the railroad, gold miners trudged up this steep pass on foot. Some were then turned back by Canadian Mounted Police if they lacked sufficient supplies to live and work in this isolated region. From Skagway, Alaska, the miners set out in the deep snow to find and mine the claims up the river. When the railroad was built, they could cover the same distance it once took them several weeks in a matter of hours. But then they had to go further from there to stake their claims. Even from a distance, we could see the tracks crossing this tumbling creek on a bridge. When water crashes on rocks like this, it's forced to carry more oxygen, making it look white. We eventually descended to the level of the river. The clean water looks slightly milky. That's because it carries silt from upstream glaciers as they melt. That substance is called glacial flour, kind of like the flour people use to bake with. 
We're no longer following the Yukon River. This is the Skagway River. It flows to Skagway, Alaska. So does the railroad.